Hello everyone, my name is Ben Simpson and today I will be presenting a method for 2D model based detection of 3D objects. This presentation fulfills part of the course requirements for EEL 6825 instructed by Dr. Wu at the University of Florida. 2D model based detection of 3D objects means that a 3D object is to be detected within a 2D plane in this case being the image sensor of a webcam. The motivation for this topic is in improving productivity and reliability of the testing of electrical printed board assemblies or PBAs. PBAs are also referred to as sub-assemblies or simply boards or cards. Test engineers can spend hours of time searching for components on a PBA in order to complete a set of tasks identified in a work instruction. One of the jobs of subassembly test engineers is to troubleshoot printed circuit board assemblies that have failed at some level of integration. Troubleshooting may come with a set of instructions that reference specific components on the board using a reference designator. Reference designators are alphanumeric and unique to every part and can be printed onto the board to help identify the location to a test engineer. Modern component technologies have shrunk in size which can mean there are no annotations on the board, making location difficult. There can also be hundreds of small components on a single board. Locating these components requires referencing assembly drawings, which can be burdensome. Now I will introduce a typical example of the steps required to troubleshoot a board. First, the test engineer will receive a set of instructions that identify components to be measured with an oscilloscope or multimeter. The test engineer will bring a paper copy of the assembly drawing and a schematic to the lab along with the work instructions. The test engineer will search for the component on the assembly drawing which can be disorienting when assembly drawings are rotated. Once oriented, the test engineer will look for silkscreen markings of this component on the board or other components in the area if a silkscreen is not printed. Silkscreen is not reliable as there is an ambiguity when parts are tightly placed. A probe is then attached to the component of interest. The connection is then verified again by referencing the paper copy. This process is repeated for each measurement. These tasks are prone to human error, reducing reliability, and it can take a significant amount of time, decreasing productivity. The proposed solution is to use machine learning techniques coupled with augmented reality glasses to provide an overlay or HUD to feed pertinent information to the test engineer to facilitate a hands-free working environment, improving productivity and reliability. Machine learning techniques are applied to the feature detection, descriptor extraction, and matching between a training image and the user's seen image, that is, a camera frame. Training image can be a photograph or computer generated, such as a CAD model. Both are investigated as possible solutions. Matching of images allows identification and tracking of the object that the user is working on. For example, the circuit board and the case study. Previous work includes using a purely CV technique. A link to the video of this technique in a previous course is shown below. Object is segmented and then contours are extracted, which is the object recognition phase. Once recognized, an algorithm compares the shape of the object to a model and draws a box around the object if there is a match. Knowing the geometry of the object relative to a CAD model, information can be overlaid onto regions of interest on the circuit board, thus augmenting the user's view. The object is then tracked using the same image processing techniques every frame. The approach is highly sensitive to lighting conditions, resulting in high jitter and lack of reliability in detection. Here is an example of the existing approach. On the left, hue saturation value filtering is used to segment the object of interest. In the center, the edges or the contour is extracted. 
on the right shows the results after all the image processing techniques are complete showing the box drawn around the board as well as a loca location of a specific component of interest. Here is the initial block diagram for the proposed approach. First, the ODB++ manufacturing file is extracted and then converted into a .obj file, which is a 3D model format. That code is um, custom in C Sharp. And then the 3D model can be transformed, rotated, and scaled. And then that model can be projected onto the 2D image plane and saved as an image to be used for training purposes. Next, key points are detected in the images using BRISC algorithm. Then, the descriptors are extracted using ORB. Next, the matches are found between the training image and the camera, the camera frames using brute force hamming. Next, the homography is computed using RANSAC. And finally, the pose or perspective is updated. And then that process is repeated for every camera frame. Now I will discuss each block in further detail. OpenCV does not have a class for 3D geometric models. Instead, most algorithms operate on arrays of the MAT class. The MAT class represents a numerical and dimensional array that can be used to store images, vectors, point clouds, etc. The 3D object model must eventually be converted to the MAT type. To convert a 3D model to a 2D image that is also compatible with OpenCV algorithms, a library capable of natively handling 3D rendering is needed. So, an interchange format must be used to convert the ODB++ format to a 3D format, then from this 3D format to an OpenCV MAT format. A library must also be chosen to simplify the code complexity required to manipulate and render this 3D model. The library chosen for this 3D rendering and manipulation is OpenGL. The reasons are OpenGL supports multiple 3D formats that can later be converted to 2D images for use in OpenCV. OpenGL is also open source in a popular format with lots of code examples. Next, a 3D model format was selected. There are many 3D model formats in existence. However, proprietary was not considered, so focus was on open specifications. The 3D format should be supported by the IDE, in this case, Unity 3D. The 3D format should be supported by our 3D rendering library, OpenGL. The 3D format does not need to be optimized or compressed because the processing is done offline, therefore speed and optimization are not critical. The 3D format does not need to support animation. Format complexity should be low to minimize code complexity. Based on the above requirements, the OBJ file format was selected. An example is shown on, shown on the right of the rendered 3D model after converting the ODB++ file. After 3D model creation, the next step is to flatten the 3D model. After the virtual object is rotated in the scene to match the desired perspective or viewing angle, the viewport can be saved to an image file using glread pixels. The viewport is the 2D mapping of the 3D model onto the computer screen. This 2D map is then saved as a 2D image. It is this 2D image that is used by the OpenCV feature detection algorithms. An example of a flattened frontal view of the 3D model is shown on the right. After the 2D training images are created, the next step is to detect the key points or features using BRISC. Key points are extracted from the training image and the scene or query image. Key points identify locations of features in an image that describe unique points that can be repeatedly detected and will be used to make comparisons between two images. BRISC, or Binary Robust Invariant Scalable Key Points algorithm, is the most robust key point extractor for this application. 
Next, the descriptors are generated to describe the key points in both images. Descriptors describe the relationships between other key points. Descriptors must be invariant to scaling, rotation, and translation for this application. ORB provides the speed required of a real-time feature detection and tracking application. This means that it provides great real-time performance. It's based on the OFAST key point detector and RBrief descriptor extractor. It uses principal component analysis and is a free alternative to SIFT and SURF algorithms. The next step after key point and descriptor extraction is to perform matching using brute force. Every key point and descriptor from both images are compared exhaustively. The descriptors with the smallest timing distance between them are paired up and considered a match. Filtering techniques such as cross-checking slash symmetry checks and ratio testing are done to remove bad matches. Too many matches reduces performance. The ratio test keeps matches that are near other key points since this means there is high dimensionality of the feature, feature space since it is likely there are other good matches nearby. Cross-checking keeps best matches by comparing both images and keeping those that are found in both images, thereby improving noise immunity. After finding the matches, the next step is to compute the homography matrix using RANSAC. The homography transform describes the perspective transformation between two planes based on key pairs. It requires a minimum of four key pairs or matches. It is used to calculate the change in perspective between the training image and the scene image. Knowing the change in perspective, assuming the original pose or perspective is known, allows tracking of the object even if it's rotated, scaled, or translated. The majority of key pairs must result in the same perspective transformation, or the matrix will be incorrect. RANSAC, or Random Sample Consensus, is a learning technique that adds robustness to the homography estimate by randomly sampling subsets of four key pairs at a time, and uses least square algorithm to remove outliers. A tunable threshold defines inliers versus outliers to improve noise rejection. Once the homography transform is computed, the original perspective or pose can be transformed to match the orientation of the object in the scene. A practical explanation is that a box is drawn around the original object in the training image. The box is then warped to fit around the object in the scene to fit the new perspective. An example is shown below where the green box on the right is the original training image contour and the blue box on the left is warped to fit around the same object at a different perspective within the scene. Now, this process is repeated for every frame from the webcam. However, the training image key points and descriptors are only computed once at runtime. The query or scene image is each camera frame and is repeated for every frame in this application. The following is a summary of the performance evaluation as well as the evolution of the application. The use of the 3D CAD model to generate training images resulted in poor performance. Proper homography estimation was impossible even though matches were found. The hypothesis is that the key points or descriptors were too ambiguous to allow consistent matching. If this, the descriptors are not unique, then the matching algorithm is inconsistent, resulting in errors. Use of a foot Photograph to perform training resulted in an improved response. Pose estimation is intermittently accurate depending on key point and descriptor algorithms. Orb key points did not provide enough matches to provide robust pose estimation. Fast key point detector resulted in too many matches and was too slow for real time applications. Brisk key points and brisk descriptors worked well. Brisk key points with orb descriptors was empirically the best performer out of all the available key point and descriptor options. The performance evaluation is empirical only and brisk orb is demonstrated herein. Here is the 3D model that was generated from the ODB++ file and currently being shown in Unity 3D. This is the result of the ODB++ to OBJ file conversion. The OBJ file has 150,000 lines of code and was generated programmatically using custom code that I wrote for this project.
here's the application running with Unity 3D. The scene image is on the left and the training image is on the right. The tunable parameters off to the left allow adjustments to the match, filters, and ransack algorithm. It can be seen that the object is not successfully detected in the scene even though there are matches shown with green lines. Here we see the image, target image on the right, which was actually a photograph this time instead of the flattened CAD model. And the key point extractor and feature descriptor are both uh, orb. The orb key point extractor provides very few key points as shown on the right in red, the red circles on the training image. You can see that when those key points are found in the scene, it's able to track, but it's uh, very intermittent and depends on the lighting conditions. Okay, here we're looking at the brisk key point extractor with the orb descriptor extractor. You can see there are many more, many more key points found both the training image and the scene image and the homography is computed correctly when the object is um, relatively close to the camera. So the performance of the, this combination is uh, a lot better than just using orb and orb for both. Um, it still needs some work as you move away from the camera uh, it seems to lose, lose track and uh, that's probably the camera resolution and the, and the lighting effects due to the reflectivity of the board. But you can see that uh, for most part the homography is estimated even when it's rotated and scaled uh, even in the plane. In conclusion, the results show the proposed approach is at least feasible and with additional investigation the technique can be made robust for industrial users in a test engineering environment. The brisk key point extraction algorithm combined with the orb descriptor extractor provided the most robust solution while meeting the real-time performance requirement. Further effort is required to implement the use of 3D CAD models in the training image catalog to improve viewing angle and find more key points from those different poses. Future work includes a more robust tracking technique that will track an object from frame to frame instead of always comparing key points to a training image. This should improve robustness and varying lighting conditions and distances from the camera. Thank you for your time and thank you Dr. Wu for devoting your time to our instruction.